This video is sponsored by 1Password. I have been an iPhone user for as long as they've sold iPhones, and for all intents and purposes, I am an Apple fanboy. But like many, I've been getting a bit bored of it. Like Apple has used the same design, the same features, they're slow to adopt new technology and the ecosystem. Never do I feel more trapped than when I hear those words. In the last few months, I've been exploring the possibility that the Pixel 7 Pro might be the device that finally, yes, finally encourages me to make a complete transition to Android. And Spoiler alert, I have actually switched to Android, but it's not what you think it is. Let's talk about the flagship features first that attracted me to the Pixel 7 Pro in the first place. And primarily for me, it's all about voice. The fact is the Pixel has far better voice transcription than any iPhone I've ever used. I can use it to send messages, add emojis, and send the message much more accurately and much faster than my iPhone experience, which generally ends up with me giving up and just typing it out by hand anyway. Now Google's transcription also works really well if you want to record a conversation and have the pixel live transcribe what's been said, including who said it whilst you have like the discussion. It's good enough even to walk into a meeting with the phone in your pocket and it records and transcribes the entire conversation word for word. It is so, so accurate. Then you've got the translation features. There have been two ways that I've used these features on my pixel so far. Firstly, when watching or listening to content that uh, doesn't have subtitles, you can switch on transcription on the device for it to do it for you. There's no matter which app that you're using. Now, secondly, I work with some clients overseas and help them create video content and I've used the pixel to translate what they're saying in their videos so I can then provide them with feedback and that's worked really really well and for me one of the flagship features that I was uh, really interested in is the Google Assistant service which can screen your calls make bookings for you and wait on hold for you now these features look and sound like they work really really well in the US but at least here in the UK at least in my experience it hasn't been as good as I'd hoped now the UK voice you hear sounds very robotic in comparison to the US voice do you need to get a hold of them urgently? Um, I need your sort code and account number. And that also is pretty obvious when you use call screening, which is where the Pixel will answer the phone for you and ask the caller things like, who's calling? Now, Google Assistant will then transcribe what they respond with, so you can tap on the screen to either, you know, accept the phone call or ask them not to call again. And so for me, with the Google Assistant answering phone calls, nine out of 10 times, the caller just hangs up whilst the Pixel is like halfway through talking because they can hear the robot voice and assume it's an answer phone. Now, here in the UK, we also don't get the features where Google Assistant will stay on hold for you when you say call the, the doctors or, you know, somewhere where you will have to wait in a queue and we don't get the feature which honestly got me really excited a couple of years ago with the Pixel 6 I think it was where the Pixel will call to make a booking for you on your behalf sounding completely natural even with all the natural like ums and ahs that humans make when making appointments. Hey Google, book a table for two at El Cocotero on Tuesday at 7. All right, just in case that's not available, can I try between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m.? Sure. Not being from the US, I don't actually know if it's capable of doing that yet. Uh, maybe let me know down in the comments if you can actually do that. I don't know, I'd love to know. Other minor features that I want to mention here, back tap. I love that I can set my pixel up so I can double tap the back of my phone to trigger the flashlight. It is super straightforward, it's well implemented and a feature that I genuinely use every single day. Whereas over on the iPhone, we have features such as Dynamic Island. And honestly, I know there's a lot of love and hate for Dynamic Island, but recently there have been some really good use cases which I have kind of missed from the Pixel. One I use all the time here is when I park my car. Dynamic Island gives me a nice countdown that's always at the top of my screen, no matter what app I'm in. I find having the countdown permanently at the top of my phone much more convenient when I haven't suddenly you know, realized the time and then rush back to the car and go and extend it and those kind of things. And as far as I guess flagship features go on the iPhone 14, that's that's kind of been it for me. Uh, again, another reason why a lot of iPhone users I know are considering a switch to Android in the first place. There has been one feature though, which is still very much a sticking point for me. And it still comes down to my, I guess, choice of laptop and desktop, which at least for now is still a Mac. And that sticking point is their seamless copy and paste. Most often I just use it to copy phone numbers from one screen to another or copy images or documents. I can basically copy anything from my computer, hit command C to copy it and then paste it onto my phone. Now there are workarounds for this on the Android platform, but they do require you to go to specific websites or install various apps that just don't work as seamlessly, which I guess 
brings me on to that word again, the ecosystem. And for me, this is a really short one, really. FaceTime. Now, most recent video calls I've had have been over either WhatsApp video or Facebook Messenger, so that's not a big issue for me. iMessage, I thought, would be a big issue for me, but only a small number of conversations were still using iMessage, and most of those were easy to move over to WhatsApp anyway. Now, I prefer to use Signal since it's more secure and encrypted, but I found that that's a harder sell because you have to get your friends to install and sign up for a whole new app when they have something like WhatsApp already installed or Facebook Messenger already installed, already working. Photos, on the other hand, Google Photos works just as well, if not better, as Apple Photos and their whole kind of ecosystem. And in fact, I would say that it's even better. It's better organized. You can search on pretty much anything about the photo to find them. And its utilities have genuinely good suggestions like moving a ton of old screenshots, like things I typically do to just send to someone and then never care to see them again, just gets them off of my main camera roll. So for me, as far as the Apple ecosystem goes, it's not a big issue apart from the copy and paste thing. And also the watch but we'll chat about that in a moment. Now, I want to touch briefly on the design as this is a bit of a luxury, I guess, iPhone users don't really have each year with pretty much the same design, the same features, the, just the camera bumps seem to get a bit bigger. So we have the Dynamic Island versus the Pixel's pinhole camera, which is much less distracting than Apple's approach. And also, I couldn't see any reason why this Dynamic Island feature couldn't be developed to look, you know, just as good, if not better, on the Pixel. And in fact, I'm actually sure someone's probably already designed the app out there that will do that, you know, knowing the Android community and the speed that they can develop things at. You do also get a toggle switch on the side to mute your iPhone. Though on the Pixel, I do just set it up so that I can just put it down, face down, and it goes into DND as soon as I do that. So that's been great when shooting YouTube videos and I can just pop it down and I know that it's just not gonna interrupt me with any phone calls or anything. The always on display, I can leave it on all day on the Pixel without impacting the battery. And it's dim enough for me to kind of see everything while still displaying all of the information that I need, like the, you know, the notifications. Whereas with Apple, for example, you get a more colorful, somewhat richer experience. But I do find that I keep thinking that display has been left on because, well, it's still quite bright, like, in, like you can see here. And it does also eat into the battery like considerably. So I actually just switch it off normally. Now they're not as rich as the Apple notifications on the Pixel, but still good enough as long as you stay on top of the icons. I find if you don't deal with the notifications, then you just get like a row, a ton of icons on the always on display screen and uh, not really being able to tell what's actually going on. Now, another design feature that you don't get on the Pixel is MagSafe. Now, something I've grown to love about the iPhone, I have so many chargers around my house, one at my desk, one at the car, one in my bedside table. Now the Pixel does have a charging stand, but MagSafe is a really great feature that I've grown to love about the iPhone. Now, thankfully, just before recording this video, my favorite case of all time from Magback, which I ordered a month or two ago, has just been delivered. Now, this isn't sponsored or anything, but I genuinely love these cases. I have them on both the iPhone and on the Pixel and on pretty much any phone I can get my hands on. And that has built-in magnets, which basically means you can stick your phone to any metal surface. Now I've used it a few times in the gym so I can either watch a video, check my workout progress, or, or even you know, feel myself getting ripped. <laughs> but it also means that my MagSafe accessories still work. The charger still work. You know, I've got a, uh, a Benks MagSafe charger here. That goes on the back. That can wirelessly charge the Pixel. I've also got a wallet here. Wallets attached on the back. Also conveniently works as a bit of a bit of a stand here. But these magnets are much stronger than normal magnets. Even normal MagSafe uh, magnets. So you can stick these phones to literally any metal surface. So now MagSafe just isn't a problem for me. Another thing that kind of sits in the design section, I guess, is Face ID on the iPhone versus Face Unlock on the Pixel. I have come to love Face ID over the years. You just pick up the phone and by the time you swipe up, it's unlocked. Like it's fast, it's secure, and it works really, really well. The Pixel, on the other hand, has Face Unlock, which actually works better in some cases because you don't need to swipe up after unlocking your phone. You just kind of put the phone down, pick the phone up, it scans your face, and you're on the home screen straight away. But but because the Pixel's implementation of Face Unlock isn't as secure, you can't use Face Unlock for things like contactless payments or unlocking password managers. So you'll have to then use the underscreen fingerprint reader for all that kind of stuff, which thankfully is still really, really good. I've had no issues at all with the fingerprint sensor in the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. I know the 6 did have issues, but they're not here in the 7 at all. Oh, and one more for design, but USB-C, come on, Apple. <laughs> I, I no longer have to carry around stupid multiple charging cables and bricks around with me everywhere I go just 
so that I can charge, you know, one device that still uses this proprietary port that nothing else uses. In terms of actually switching from an iPhone to the Pixel, there are a few ways you can switch. Now, firstly, in the box, you do get this little uh, dongle here, which allows you to plug your iPhone directly into the Pixel, which then copies as much as you can from your iPhone to your Pixel. But where I've used an iPhone for so many years now that I just don't want to copy everything over from, you know, from here to here, I want to start from, you know, from a clean slate, start fresh. So if you do want to transfer things, you can, but I use this as a bit of an opportunity to start from scratch without suddenly, you know, bloating my phone full of photos and messages and apps that it thinks it needs. Now, the one potential problem when moving from Apple is for those of you who store things in Keychain for all your passwords, I would highly recommend before you switch to a Pixel that you sign up for a proper password manager, install it and set it up on your iPhone because using a proper password manager, for me at least, has meant I can bring all of my usernames, all of my passwords and all of my other kind of information I store in there to any new device that I pick up, whether it's a Pixel, whether it's Samsung Galaxy, any phone, any device, it works on all of them. I have used 1Password for literally years now and they've become a fairly long-term sponsor of this channel. So there will be a link down below to get 25% off of either a personal subscription or a family subscription. Now, next on the list of things that nobody can agree on are the cameras on both of these phones. Honestly, it is 2022 and these phones are both excellent and widely regarded as the two best phones when it comes to cameras. Now, a few things I have noticed though when using the Pixel. Now, firstly, in my experience, the Pixel seems to miss edges when taking portrait photos. So you snap a photo, then zoom in and look around the edges of like the person and you'll see that things like the ears are often mistaken as part of the backgrounds. So the Pixel blurs them out versus the iPhone, which yes, admittedly isn't always perfect, but it does seem to get it right more than the Pixel does. Now, I think when testing out various Android phones recently, Recently. And actually, the S22 Ultra and Samsung in general actually seem to be the best here in terms of edge detection. But one thing I definitely do prefer with the Pixel over the iPhone is the lens setup. Like specifically, Pixel's five times lens is far more practical than Apple's like kind of combining the one times and three times lens to give us a two times optical lens. Now with the Pixel, you can get better photos from greater distances, and particularly if you have kids like I do, you want to snap photos at their shows or honestly really anywhere where you're not standing right next to it. Whereas on the iPhone, Apple has combined those two lenses to give you this kind of semi-fake computerized two times focal length but I do use the five times on the pixel like all the time versus the iPhone where I actually normally choose between one and three still even though the two is there. Now checking off all the other kind of modes here video and cinematic mode with video it can be very very blurry I find on the pixel kind of what the iPhone used to look like when their cinematic mode first came out it is a lot better now on the iPhone but honestly I don't really use the cinematic mode on either phone that much to be honest so it's not a huge problem for me. I also found that video Video can be jittery on the Pixel, especially when you zoom with like stabilization, where it's trying to lock onto the thing that it thinks you're you know, trying to film. Low lights, both are equally good in my opinion. Macro too, although I prefer the Pixel images, I think here for the macro camera. Now you do also have the flagship features, I guess, on the Pixel. You've got Magic Eraser, which lets you quickly erase other people or objects from your photos, which can be fun to play with. And you also have Photo Unblur, which restores your blurry photos to a more sharper image. Now day to day, I honestly don't really use these features a whole bunch. If I've seen I've taken a blurry photo, I'll just try and take a better one. And actually the one time I did use it, it didn't actually work anyway. The Magic Eraser does work, but it depends on the type of photo you're trying to erase things from. And of course, if you zoom in like closely to the images, to me, it's fairly obvious that it's had some objects like removed from it. You can see the lines and the kind of blurriness where it's been removed. But overall, even though the Pixel has some issues, I actually find myself wanting to share my Pixel images more than I do with the iPhone. Though I know this will always come down to like personal preference instance, there is no right or wrong answer here. Both of them are great cameras. Both of them are great phones. So you can't go wrong with either of them. Now, before I get onto the watch experience, I want to touch on overall performance and pricing. For performance, both of these phones are very, very fast. They keep up with each other when they're launching apps and with just general day-to-day -day usage. I haven't personally experienced any slowdowns or glitches or, or even bugs. And that's something I keep seeing time and time again with lots of iPhone users on Twitter. But honestly, I've not had any issues with either of them. Now, yes, of course, if you do some heavy lifting, then the iPhone's faster chip may be better for you. But personally, I don't edit videos on my phone. I don't edit bigger photos or, or really play that many games and the Pixel manages to keep up with me just fine. Now, the Pixel also has the benefit here of being the more competitively priced than the iPhone, particularly the iPhone Pro Max version of the iPhone 14 that I've got here, even though you get a very, very similar screen size on the phones as well. So I would say that for those worried about downgrading to a, a cheaper and slower phone, if you're looking at the benchmarks, it's honestly, it's really 
not an issue at all when it comes to the Pixel 7 Pro. Okay, let's talk watches now. So for the Pixel and Android in general, it does open up more options to you in terms of like which watch you want to wear. That's a tongue twister. Which watch you want to wear? Which watch? Cool whip, yeah. You mean cool whip? Yeah, cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. You get more choices in different designs, different colors, just to suit your preferences. So of course you've got the Galaxy Watch 5, you've got the Tick Watch, the Fossil Watch, and of course the Pixel Watch. Now for me, these options still aren't as good as the Apple Watch. Like honestly, it's, to me, it's still got the best user interface. It's smooth. The way it works is just flawless. And particularly with this new Apple Watch Ultra that I've been wearing, it's battery life, the screen, everything about it has been just, just crazy good. Like this, this is on day four of not charging it, and we're on 7% battery life left. And that's been, was was at 10% I think when I woke up. So it's going down very, very slowly. Now I have been wearing the Pixel Watch for the last couple of weeks or so, and it was just okay. Now a few specifics which really dulled my experience with the Pixel Watch specifically. Now firstly, when you set your phone to DND, it doesn't set your watch to DND. A feature that I would have thought would be pretty obvious to have here, given like the integrations and both being Google products. Now secondly, the watch's battery life just isn't great. Just saying that I was on 7%, my, my Apple Watch has gone down from 10 to 7 in like a couple of hours or so. My Pixel Pixel Watch has gone down from 100 to 86% in the same amount of time. Now, even though I actually have the always on displays turned off on both of these watches, I found myself getting to the end of the day with just a completely dead Pixel Watch, just completely run out of battery. Now, thirdly, with the Apple Watch, you can use your phone to like unlock the watch. So I put on my watch in the morning, and then the first time I look at my phone, my, my iPhone, it unlocks the watch so it knows that I'm wearing it and can, I can get into it and do everything. However, with the Pixel Watch, it doesn't quite work like this. So I put the watch on in the morning and I assume that everything is fine, kind of like with the iPhone, it should unlock, you know, I look at my Pixel, it should work. Until I realized that my watch hasn't given me any notifications all morning. So then I tap my watch and it prompts me to, you know, swipe to unlock it. So I then unlock it and then it kind of finishes booting up, I, I guess from where it was totally dead the night before. So now I've gone a few days where I haven't remembered to put the watch on and like unlock my watch on my wrist. So then I miss out on like a ton of notifications. Now, fourthly, and this is a minor thing, but it still hasn't been updated if you swim with a Pixel Watch. Like all it can do if you do swim workout with the Pixel Watch is track the time that you spent swimming. It doesn't log heart rate, length, pace, like nothing, just the time. So if you are a keen swimmer, honestly, the Pixel Watch just isn't good for you at the moment. Now this is of course the first generation Pixel Watch. So they're of course learning a ton of stuff, all the feedback we're giving them from our experiences. But for me, I would probably go with a Galaxy Watch 5 Pro for being the, the closest to an Apple Watch like kind of features and design and, and battery life as well. Maybe let me know down in the comments below which which watch that kind of tongue twister again. That's a cool whip. <laughs> which watch you are using or which watch you'd go for if you did switch. But what is good is the audio experience. Now you do of course get the Pixel Buds and the Buds Pros, which I have and both work really, really great, but they just don't stay in my ears. I seem to have a shape of ear that just doesn't keep any real in-ear headphones in my in my ears at all. Like these don't work, the Apple AirPod Pros don't work, but I do use the Beats Fit Pro earbuds like all the time because they actually do stay in my ears because of this like rubber nubbin thing. And I'm glad to report they work just fine on the Pixel phones. You can also use AirPods on the Pixels with some kind of limited features, things like installing firmware updates doesn't work as well. But for general day-to-day -day use and listening to music, they work just fine. Now, I know that the whole kind of iPhone versus Android discussion is hugely triggering for a lot of people with most people just saying the side they've chosen is the best because they're right. But this is exactly why I've been trying out a bunch of Android phones. And actually, after all of this testing and swapping back and forth, I am going to be switching to Android, but it's not gonna be a pixel. Not just yet, anyway. 